Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. In the last video I introduced Raspberry Pi's new Pico board, featuring their RP2040 Dual Core Cortex-M0 microcontroller. In this video I'm going to be getting it up and running using Pimeroni's new Pico Explorer board. I did intend to do this in the last video, but I couldn't get it working, so in the end I just cut it down to an introduction, and I've actually been really busy since, so I haven't had time to upload this. The Pico Explorer board has a slot for the Raspberry Pi Pico, a 1.5 inch display, four switches, two half bridge motor drivers, some headers that break out various pins and a mini breadboard to add whatever else you need. It also has two of Pimeroni's breakout garden sockets so you can add any of their breakout boards as well. I'm going to be setting up the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK on a relatively fresh Windows computer by following their getting started guide just so you can see exactly what to expect when doing it yourself. We're then going to set up Visual Studio Code as our IDE and download a couple of the examples and build them just to get the board up and running with like a blinking light or something. I think Raspberry Pi's intention is that you build and program it from a Raspberry Pi, but since most people use Windows computers, I'm going to be doing my tutorial on that. But if you want to see me do something on Linux on a Raspberry Pi, then leave a comment down below. We're then going to build Pimeroni's Pico Explorer example code and hopefully get something up and running on that. And I think it's a test of the display. Um, it occurred to me as I'm filming this right now that I didn't actually get any components or breakout boards or anything to show you something a little bit more interesting. So I will get something and do another video on that in the future to show something a bit more interesting than just the LCD test. So make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss out on that. I've got the getting started guide open so that we've got a list of things that we need to install, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can get to this as well. Um, I think this computer already has Python and Git installed. So the only things we're going to be installing is the ARM GCC compiler, CMake, build tools for Visual Studio 2019, um, and also Visual Studio Code, which this doesn't mention in this section. Um, so we'll start by going to ARM GCC compiler. And then we're just going to install the major release here at the top. Okay, so once we're done, make sure you tick add path to environment variable. Um, it just makes life easier if it's already added to the path that everything can then access it. And we don't want to launch it and we don't want to see the readme. Okay, so next on the list, we need to install CMake. And then we're just going to install the latest release from down here. So let's get the 64-bit Windows installer. Same again, let's make sure we add it to the path just to make life a little bit easier. And then go ahead and click install. Cool, let's get on to the next one, which is build tools for Visual Studio 2019. And we just need to download it from there. Okay, so once the Visual Studio build tools opens up, the only thing we need to install are these C++ build tools. So click on the little selection box there, and then just click install. Once done, you might have to restart your computer, but let's move on to the next one. So we've now got um, Python 3.7. Like I say, I think this has Python on here already, but I'm gonna install it again and just see what happens. 3.7 release, and I'm going to download the 64-bit executable installer. Ah, there you go. So I've already got it, so I'm just going to do an upgrade. Okay. Um, and finally, I'm not going to install Git because I do already have it on here, and you don't strictly need it, but I'd recommend you have it. It does make life slightly easier. So if we go down, we've done all this, we've installed Visual Studio Code, and we've installed Python. And there you go. So the, the final thing to do now is to get the, the actual SDK itself. So let's go to this address. I'm gonna put this just in my root C directory. So if you open up git and head there, and then let's just paste that in.
And then finally, we're going to get the Pico examples folder as well. We've now got all the software we'll need to build our code. We've got the Pico SDK set up on our C drive, and we've also got some examples. The final thing to do is now install Visual Studio Code. So let's get rid of all of this and go and get Visual Studio Code. And again, this is a fairly simple installation. We just need to download and run. We've now got Visual Studio Code. There's just a few more things and then we'll be ready to build everything. So let's head further down in the Getting Started guide to building Hello World from Visual Studio Code. Now we don't launch Visual Studio Code from the start menu like normal, but instead we load it from the Visual Studio Tools developer command prompt because that makes sure that all the environmental variables are set up correctly. I think there is a way that you don't have to do this every time, um, but I'm not gonna cover it in this video. So let's go to start and then let's get the developer command prompt for VS 2019 and just type in code. And then once that's opened, we can close this. We now need to install this CMake tools extension. So head down to settings and click on extensions and then we need to search for CMake tools. And then from there, install that. And then once we're done, we need to configure it. So go into settings and then under extensions, we should see CMake here. If you don't, you probably just need to restart Visual Studio Code. And there we go, CMake configuration. So then let's follow what it says in the Getting Started guide. We need to go to CMake Tools configuration and then head down to CMake Configure Environment, which is here. And we're gonna add Pico SDK Path and then where we'll find that. So in our case, it'll be in the C drive. Next, we need to go to CMake Generator. And then we need to type in nmake make files. And then finally, that's everything that we need. So we're gonna go to File, Open Folder, and then we're gonna open the examples projects that we downloaded. When we open those up, we'll see in the bottom right hand corner, it says, would you like to configure the project? We're gonna click on yes. And then we're gonna select our GCC ARM compiler. If you wanna change that later on, or if you accidentally click no or something, if you click on the bottom taskbar, it'll let you set what kit to use there. Okay, so once the configuration's done, we're now gonna build a project, but we're not gonna build all of them. We're just gonna specifically build the Blink project. So in the bottom where it says all, click on that, and then it'll give you a list of all the targets that you can build. Type in Blink, and we'll get Blink executable. Click on that, and then click Build. If you've configured everything correctly, then that should build without any issues. If you're having any difficulties, then leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can help out. We can now go and get our compiled binary. So head into the root folder of where those are, 
in my case like I said before it's on C so we're going to Pico examples and we've now got this build folder so let's head into there and then you'll see it's the same file structure as we have in the higher level but these have all the built binaries in them if you've built that project so obviously for us we've only built blink so it's only going to have them inside of there these other ones aren't going to have anything inside them necessarily so head into blink and we'll see we've got blink.uf2 we're going to copy that file and then we're going to plug our Raspberry Pi into the computer and hold down this boot select button at the same time. That will enumerate as a mass storage device and all you need to do is drag that UF2 file into there and it'll reset and start running. And then if you look at your board, you should see a nice blinking light. So that's it. That's our first project on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Let's close all this and then go and get the Pimeroni example code. We'll start by going to Pimeroni's GitHub. And from there, we need to get the Pimeroni Pico repository. So let's copy that. And that's all we need to do. So let's reopen Visual Studio Code. And let's go to File, Open Folder, and open the folder that we just downloaded. As with the last one, let's click Yes to configuring the project and we're going to go with GCC for ARM once loaded let's head to the bottom and make sure that we're only building the Pico Explorer demo so type in Explorer click on the executable and then let's click build that should build successfully but again if you have any difficulties leave a comment and I'll try and help out so let's now open the Pimeroni Pico folder. And inside there, let's go to Build, Examples, and then Pico Explorer. And we can see, once again, we've got a UF2 file. Let's copy that. And same as last time, we need to plug in the Raspberry Pi Pico holding down the boot select pin. Let's paste our file into there and it should automatically reset. And then you can see we've got a little demo running on our LCD display. So I hope you got a good understanding of how to get started. Um, if you have any questions or comments, like I said before, leave them down below and I'll try and help out. I am gonna get some breakout garden boards so that I can do something a little bit more interesting, like I said, and hopefully deep dive into a little bit more of what we can do with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm also going to look at doing some sort of debugging that isn't just loading a UF2 onto a mass storage device because obviously that's a really inefficient way to add programs to microcontrollers. I know that at the minute the the way that they want you to do is either to use a Raspberry Pi like I said before and then use the GPIO as an SWD interface. The the Raspberry Pi Pico itself has SWD pins, so it, the facility is there to program it. But I have to say, it's kind of annoying that they don't have a built-in J-Link debugger or something. Um, but I suppose that would increase the cost of the board a fair amount because of the J-Link license. Um, and also, I guess you can't debug on an Arduino, so maybe it's not so annoying after all. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and get uh, something up and running using a debugger. I do also have this Sega J-Link which I'm actually really lucky to have because they're about 300 quid and I know that your average maker or hobbyist just isn't going to have one of those lying around. I suppose that's something that's quite nice for, for people that are running the Arduino and that kind of thing. You can get an Atmel Ice for 50 or 60 quid so it's not horrendously expensive if you want to add debugging capabilities um, but at the minute the only way to do that is to get a J-Link debugger like I've got um, which is really expensive or to use a second Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna do a video on that as well, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Um, otherwise, let me know down in the comments if you've got any feedback. I hope you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.